Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Youssef. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree 5 of 2020 restructuring the Bahrain Chamber for Economic, Financial and Investment Dispute Resolution. Under the decree, the Board of Trustees of the Chamber will be chaired by Sheikh Hayya bin Rashid Al Khalifa and will include the following members. Dr. John Paulson, India Johnson, Yusuf Abdul Hassan Khalaf, Stephen Jakuch, Rida Muhtashimi, Ali Klayman, and Rashid Abdul Rahman Ibrahim, and the term of the membership is three years. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa ratified and issued Law 1 of 2020 regarding Bahrain's accession to the United Nations Convention on the use of electronic communication and international contracts following its approval by the Shura and Representatives Councils, which was adopted in New York on 23rd of November of 2005. His Majesty his Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable congratulations from His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa on the occasion of the 19th anniversary of the National Action Charter. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister said that the National Action Charter came as a result of the wisdom and vision of His Majesty for the Kingdom's progress and development to meet the aspirations of the people of Bahrain. His Royal Highness wished His Majesty abundant health and happiness to continue the development march. In response, His Majesty the King sent a cable of thanks to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and hailed the Kingdom's achievements and highlighted the constructive role of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister in making numerous achievements and meeting the aspiration of the people of Bahrain. His Majesty the King wished His Royal Highness the Prime Minister abundant health and happiness. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable of congratulations from His Royal Highness uh, Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, marking the 19th anniversary of the National Action Charter. His Royal Highness affirmed that this national occasion is an important part of the comprehensive development march led by His Majesty and is an important event in the Kingdom's modern history. His Royal Highness pledged to implement His Majesty's directives and visions for the benefit of the Kingdom, wishing His Majesty abundant health and happiness. In response, His Majesty the King expressed pride in His Royal Highness's chairmanship of the National Action Charter Activation Committee and His Royal Highness's past achievements and hopes of achieving more to make the Kingdom a model of dealing with challenges. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable of congratulations from the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, on the occasion of the 19th anniversary of the National Action Charter. Her Royal Highness emphasized the role and status of Bahraini women in st establishing the future of Bahrain, expressing appreciation for the support of His Majesty the King to maintaining the high level of Bahraini women's participation in the Kingdom's development. She expressed pride in Bahraini women's reaching a new level of achievement and hailed His Majesty's support in making Bahrain's a model for women's empowerment. In response, His Majesty the King sent a cable of thanks to Her Royal Highness, highlighting her role in leading Bahraini women in development, social and economic fields. His Majesty wished Her Royal Highness abundant health and success. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received a cable of congratulations from His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, marking the 19th anniversary of the National Action Charter. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince expressed pride in the achievements made during the march of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, which were based on the principles of the National Action Charter and the initiatives from which it stems. In response, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister sent a similar cable to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, in which he hailed His Royal Highness's efforts and support to the development march in the Kingdom, wishing him abundant health and happiness. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, met the newly appointed Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani, at Qadaybiyya Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the ongoing success of Bahrain diplomacy, both regionally and internationally, and noted with pride Bahrain's wide ranging diplomatic accomplishments over the last five decades. He highlighted the efforts and determination of Bahrain's dip diplomats and the important role they play in enhancing the Kingdom's comprehensive development led by His Majesty the King. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince congratulated Dr. Zayani on his new ministerial role, wishing him success in further promoting the Kingdom's diplomatic policies. His Royal Highness wished the advisor to His Majesty the King for Diplomatic Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Muhammad Al Khalifa's success in his new position and praised the efforts he led in advancing the Kingdom's diplomatic achievements and strengthening the Kingdom's multilateral relations as a previous Minister of Foreign Affairs. Dr. Zayan expressed gratitude for the opportunity to meet His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and highlighting the importance of His Royal Highness's directives and guidance towards supporting the Ministry's various initiatives. 
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince also met the chairman of the Milken Institute, Michael Milken, and an accompanying delegation in the Bia Palace. His Royal Highness noted the importance of implementing progressive programs and policies aimed at further developing the national economy, enhancing innovation and providing quality opportunities that benefit the kingdom and its citizens in line with the goals of the kingdom's comprehensive development led by His Majesty the King. His Royal Highness welcomed Milken to Bahrain, highlighting the kingdom's competitive economic environment, which has attracting investment opportunities across various sectors. He praised the role think tanks play in shaping policy and economic agendas aimed at further enhancing sustainable development. Milken expressed gratitude for the opportunity to meet His Royal Highness and noted his continued support to strengthening the kingdom's economic and financial development. Under the patronage of the BDF Commander-in-Chief, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, a ceremony was held to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the establishment of the Royal Shields, which coincides with the 52nd anniversary of the BDF establishment. Upon arrival, the Commander-in-Chief was received by Defense Affairs Minister Lieutenant General Abdullah Hassan al naimi Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagar al naimi Defense Affairs Ministry's Under Secretary Major General Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, Royal Shields Commander Lieutenant General Rashid Abdullah al naimi and a number of senior BDF officers. After the anthem, Sheikh Khalifa conducted a tour where he witnessed a number of mechanisms and equipment and the most important systems, weapons and technologies that entered the Royal Shields. He also viewed a number of historical photos that highlighted the march of the Royal Shields. The ceremony began with recitation of verses from the Holy Quran and the Royal Shields commander gave a speech in which he said that the Royal Shields celebrate the 50th anniversary of its founding since it was formed by the order of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. He expressed thanks to the BDF and the Commander-in-Chief for patronizing the event and for unlimited support received from the BDF officials. He also affirmed the readiness of the Royal Shields members to defend their country. The BDF Commander in Chief then gave a speech on the occasion. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <laughs> شاركت هذه الوحدة سبع مشاركات رئيسية منذ تأسيسها في 1970 ولله الحمد جميع مشاركاتها أنجزت فيها المهمة بكفاءة واقتدار تقدم بالشكر للقائد ولهيئة الركن قادة السرايا جميع الضباط اللي ساهموا في مرحلة البناء والتأسيس والتدريب تحياتي لإخواننا بعد اللي موجودين على الخط الآن الحد الجنوبي 
فنقول لهم بعد تحيات جلالة الملك وتحياتي وتحيات الإخوان شكروهم على الواجب اللي يالسين يقومون فيه ومشكورين وما قصرتوا الله يوفقكم إن شاء الله وإن شاء الله دائما نلتقي وياكم على الخير إن شاء الله Commemorative gifts were presented to the Deputy of Commander-in-Chief by the Royal Shields Commander on the occasion and a number of Royal Shields members greeted him. The Kingdom of Bahrain's Attorney General, Dr. Ali bin Fadl Bahrainin, announced that following a multi-year investigation, the first in a series of prosecutions have commenced against corporations and individuals involved in a vast money laundering scheme. The prosecutions related to the laundering of billions of dollars channeled through the Bahraini entity Future Bank, which was set up by contro and controlled by two Iranian state-owned banks, Bank Sadirat and Bank Mali. The Kingdom's public prosecution found that the scheme enabled various Iranian entities, including entities involved in financing terrorism, to execute international transactions while avoiding regulatory, regulatory scrutiny. The defendants are charged with multiple offenses under Bahrain's law on prevention and combating money laundering, as well as violations of applicable Bahraini banking laws and regulations. The public prosecution has referred the cases to Bahrain's High Criminal Court. Providing additional details on the investigations, the Attorney General stated that a 2018 assessment of Future Bank's operations by the Central Bank of Bahrain found Future Bank and its controlling shareholders to have engaged in wide-scale violations of Bahrain's banking laws. One from the concealment involvement, the de deliberate removal of mandatory information when transferring money via the SWIFT network and illicit practice referred to as wire stripping. The investigation identified thousands of fire strip transactions totaling approximately $5 billion. A second form of concealment involved the use of a con covered messaging service as an alternative to SWIFT, which deliberately concealed transactions from Bahrain regulators. These actions allowed Future Bank to conceal an additional $2 billion of transactions. The governor of the Central Bank of Bahrain, Rashid Al Maraj, noted that as part of the Financial Action Task Force and a founding member of the regional MENA FATF, Bahrain is committed to full implementation of international standards in combating money laundering and fi the financing of terrorism. The Shuran Representatives Councils organized a ceremony marking the 19th anniversary of the National Action Charter, where a number of the two councils members and General Secretariat's affiliates participated. The Shura Council Chairman and Representatives Council Speaker affirmed that the National Action Charter began with a firm royal vision by His Majesty the King to reach a new stage of civilization and history for the Kingdom. Fozia Zena asserted the keenness of the legislative authority on achieving the aspirations of the country and its citizens, hailing the effective cooperation with the Shura Council. Ali Saleh stated that the charter resulted in a series of gains and achievements and was an outcome of the people's unification and loyalty to its leadership. Out of the true belief of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa in the involvement and partnership of citizens in the decision-making process and the importance of democracy, he launched the ambitious reform project on top of which is the National Action Charter, marking a turning point in the history of the Kingdom celebrated today by the Shura and Representatives Councils in addition to all segments of society drafted by the people, for the people, and uh, we take uh, great pride in uh, our march towards a better reform in our country. We have seen many achievements uh, in the political, social and economic spheres. As for myself, as a Bahraini of the Jewish faith, it is indeed a privilege to be part of our legislative process in our bicameral system of parliament, and um, I wish uh, our country further progress year by year. Based on the foundation laid by the Charter, the two councils work hand in hand to maintain the functioning and healthy democratic environment, mature political action and preserve national gains. This is the day that our king give us the value and the vote. This is the day that give us that we feel that we are human and we can say whatever we want to say and we can change and we are in everything and we are involved and everything in this country, this is what we are, yeah, and this, this is what 
our king promised us and he did it. And today we are celebrating this. Members of the two councils reiterated that the National Action Tata accelerated the momentum of countless educational, health, social, economic and political accomplishments as part of the Kingdom of Bahrain's ongoing progress and renaissance in all fields. Contributed to the well-being of, of Bahrain and Bahrainis in general. If you do look into the, from, the, from the time that um, uh, the National Charter wa was created till now, how the economy of Bahrain has uh, progressed considerably. And, and this is a proof of what has contributed to this stability and attracted the investment in Bahrain. The Shura and Representative Councils expressed pride in the National Action Tata, describing its anniversary as a cherished annual national occasion to renew allegiance between the leadership and the people. On the 19th anniversary of the National Action Tata, today the Shura and Representative Councils celebrate a bright moment in the history of the Kingdom. A new era of freedom and human rights that embodies the free will of every Bahraini to shape the future of his country. Heba Abdel Ghaffar, Bahrain International. Under the patronage of the BDF Commander-in-Chief, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, the conclusion of the BDF Commander-in-Chief Doubles Tennis Championship 2020 was held, where he delegated the Oil Minister, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, to attend the seventh edition of the championship, which coincides with the 52nd BDF anniversary celebrations. The championship witnessed the participation of many security officers in Bahrain, which aims to develop the level of players and create an atmosphere of friendly competition. The celebration started with a recital of verses from the Holy Quran, then the director of the officers club, Commodore Nu'man Rashid al-Hassan, delivered a speech on the occasion. The oil minister then awarded the winning teams. The minister congratulated the participants on their excellent performance and expressed thanks to the championships organizers, stressing that the interest in establishing such championships reflects the importance of physical fitness, which is one of the most important modern military, military requirements. The chairman of the Board of Real Estate Regulat Regulat Regulation Authority and president of the Serbian Land Registration Bureau, Sheikh Salman bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, inaugurated the Bahrain Real Estate Investment Exhibition 2020 with the participation of a number of major real estate companies in the kingdom. More on this report. The 2020 Bahrain Real Estate Investment Exhibition was held for the third year in a row for the importance of the real estate sector in the kingdom and its role in attracting local and international investments. This initiative encourages investors and developers to enhance the sector and create an investment environment in this field. I'm extremely happy to see all the products uh, for different developers, whether be at uh, affordable or mid or high. Uh, today there is a good opportunity for the buyers whether to live or to invest as uh, having the highest yield uh, internationally in Bahrain and you get today anything between 7 to 10 percent which consider the highest. Uh, you see all the developers here under one roof uh, showing all their products. Bahrain is considered one of the most stable markets and has the ability to cope with the economic challenges despite the regional and international challenges. The government exerted its efforts to vitalize the real estate sector and provide opportunities and benefits for citizens. We recorded a quite good number of visitors, around 25 to 30,000 visitors last year. Um, we come here again to provide a, a boutique uh, exhibition for properties and uh, a diverse uh, exhibitors background from property developers to brokers and um, with the support of Freera and the support of Tim Keen, we're providing a platform that uh, uh, real estate uh, professionals can every day, uh, every year, sorry, uh, come and meet and um, look at what's, uh, what's the latest projects that's been launched in Bahrain. The event gathered a number of major companies in the kingdom who presented their projects and offers. Nasija is participating in this exhibition with two projects. One of them is Canal View, uh, a project in Delmona Island. It's about four buildings sharing the same podium overseeing the canal and the canal basin and the sea. 
and uh, the, the, the project have a retail of about 6,000 square meters, uh, which will offer cafes, restaurants on the, on the canal. It is uh, adjacent to the walkway from the, from the canal straight to the mall, Mall of Delmonia, which is going to be about 150 meters away. Uh, the project is four buildings, about 250 apartments, from studios up to four bedrooms. We're very proud to represent Marassi Al Bahrain here. The project here is Seafront Luxury Properties, and it's going to create 22,000 places for people to live. The, the lifestyle, the luxury, the, the location is all key, and it's increasing the already beautiful Bahrain to a higher level. This exhibition contributes in enhancing the economic movement of the kingdom in all fields, especially the real estate. Reporting for Bahrain International, I am Hamad Youssef. The Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Women, Halil Ansari, opened a workshop on GCC Women's Participation and Development, which is organized by the GCC Statistical Center in cooperation with the SCW and the Information and E-Government Authority at the SCW headquarters in Rafah. Al Ansari affirmed the importance of the center's efforts in evaluating itself based on the conditions of Gulf society and expressed hope that the workshop will serve as a platform for exchange of expertise and to inspire best practices in GCC countries. The workshop was attended by various Gulf specialists in women-related matters whose participation in the event reflects the GCC government's emphasis on women's participation in comprehensive and sustainable development. She discussed Bahrain's experience, which has been based on a strategy that was laid in 2005 to promote women's participation, which represented the first effort of its kind in the region. Al Ansari affirmed the SCW's interest in understanding the perspective of the participants and that the SCW is supervised by Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, is keen on using various methods to ensure women's empowerment through the cooperation of all the state institutions as per the Kingdom's Vision 2030. The Shura Council congratulated His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, on the 19th anniversary of the National Action Charter. The Shura expressed deep pride in the outstanding milestone of Bahrain's national history, stressing that the anniversary is an occasion for Bahrainis to renew allegiance to His Majesty the King. Through endorsing the National Action Charter with 98.4% of the votes, Bahrainis have affirmed their support to His Majesty the King's vision for development, reform and progress. The Shura Council expressed its pride in the national accomplishments during the prosperous era of His Majesty the King since the National Action Charter started. The Shura Council confirmed that the process of national action continues to move forward at various levels based on the solid foundation of the Constitution and the National Action Charter. It pledged to His Majesty the King and the Honorable People of Bahrain to work to support and enhance the nation-building process and development in the Kingdom. The National Action Charter is distinguished by an original Bahraini experience that have laid the foundations of national unity and established the principles of framework of true de democracy. More on this report. The National Action Charter is the Bahraini experience that organized the developmental operation with all its dimensions, after which Bahrain witnessed many transformations in various sectors, including economic, political, social, and cultural. These transformations constituted a milestone in the political history of the kingdom that was hailed by many regional and international experts. Since the drafting of the charter, it received the support of the people of Bahrain and resulted in achieving many positive transformations during the era of His Majesty the King. The ballots that Bahrainis cast in the ballot box in 2001 were not the end, but a major beginning for a Bahraini progress and reform that allowed for the resumption of parliamentary life, the assignment of legislative powers to the Shura Council, and the establishment of many constitutional authorities, institutions, and councils which represent the pillars of the comprehensive reform project. The Charter Day is an unforgettable day for every Bahraini and a step that carries many meanings for the march of political, economic and social reform which contributed to fulfilling the aspirations of the people of Bahrain. The Charter contributed to paving the Bahraini political, economic and social path in a democratic image that reflects Bahrain civilization.